Good evening, everybody. All right, got some, lots of good looking charts tonight. And for a very good reason. This market just doesn't want to change direction. This is recorded, and yes, you can find it on the members area each night, or each after each night. All right, as we can see, the market cannot, this is the Dow, cannot get down through this uh, trend trading. Let's see, I don't know whether I've got a whiteboard on here or not. But we can also see very uh, clearly if there's kind of a little trend, whoops, kind of a little resistance level here. So if uh, they push it up through this level, that's going to be a good breakout. Is it ready to move this way or this way? Well, it looks like it's trying to push up through, but you get more evidence of that by just looking at the NASDAQ chart. Let's say that we're still in an uptrend. They backed it off today and brought it right back up to the top of the trading range. I would anticipate we're still in, in this trend. Right up through here. And if we keep riding right up along here, along above the T-line, that tells us that the more we stay up in this direction and the NASDAQ, the higher the probability that we're going to see the uh, Dow finally break up through the, the top. The S&P um, isn't really uh, doing other thing, anything other than keeping in a steady uptrend, going up uh, uh, into new territory. The interest rates are starting to bottom in here. Let's make this chart smaller. I say start the bottom. You can see that we have this downtrending channel. Now it's getting up toward the top of the that channel. Um, Stochastic's still on its way up. So if the uh, uh, if the uh, chart uh, stays or if the trading of the bonds stay above the uh, T line, they've got to eventually break out through this level to tell us that the uh, rates aren't aren't dropping. But as you can see, they've been Steadily moving down, um, so we got to watch to see whether the bonds start selling off from here. It means we're still in a downtrend. Interest rates could still le keep creeping up a little bit. All right, some of the other ones. Crude oil came right back again. Big bullish left-right combination. That means crude oil uh, should be on its way back up. Gold. Gold got whacked today. There's this, you know, as you can see, they failed at the 50. Your doji, your doji, now your gap down, they're going lower on gold prices. And silver, same scenario. Two things are happening right here, as we can see. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, well, we've pretty much got this... Uh, Scenario going on, and it failed right here at the 50. The T line gap down. If they break this down below the 200 tomorrow, they're taking silver prices down. Uh, the dollar index still coming up, but it's also right here at the uh, kind of the breakout range. So it's either going to roll over here again. Or if they break this through, now we're in a new dynamic, another uh, another trend in progress. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Soybeans is backed off. Where did it back off? Pretty much right at that level. Now we had hanging man, hanging man. Oh, I hate that little yellow box. Uh, doji confirmation of selling down through the uh, T line. Uh, looks like there uh, still has a lot of downside to it. 
So essentially, we're seeing this kind of trend channel setting up. Soybeans could be heading back to this area. Uh, did short uh, wheat today. Wheat, same scenario. They did a doji right here at the uh, T line and started taking it down, so started shorting it. Uh, had a good trade. Popped up a little bit after hours, but I think you still got potential downside on this because that's where we've been kind of heading. So if they break this support level, they're going to head down further. Corn, as you can see, it's it's still heading back down toward this level. Oh, palladium. No, I never even looked at palladium. I wouldn't even know what you use palladium for. Uh, it's holding up well, though. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Oh, copper. No. Copper also uh, starting back down toward the bottom of the trend channel. A trillion dollar coin. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other ones, let's see, what else have I been trading? Uh, went short in feeder cattle today. Uh, I'm sorry, I went short on Friday as it started failing up here and started heading back down after this little hammer type signal, stochastics heading down. Uh, closed it out today, but now have reshorted it since it opened lower after a doji. Not too concerned yet. We're not in the oversold area. We're not we're seeing a little pop up after hours, but uh, would kind of uh, factor that if they take this back down through the uh, Today's low, or tonight's low, that tomorrow they could have another big down day like this. If they did, then they're breaking out through this downward trend channel. Essentially a J-hook, various J-hook pattern. Okay, all right, thank you. Use palladium and uh, cat catalytic converter converters. Let's see, I had another one. Oh. I've been in cotton, because cotton is just a very simple chart. Here's our what we call our classic. Fry pan bottom, strong price move. Pull back. I was short in here, but notice what happened in the next three days. They couldn't take it down. Went long as it started coming back up through the T-line. Still long uh, with basically a wave one J hook pattern starting wave three. And let's see, silver gold, what else do we have? Uh, that's all I can think of right now. I haven't been trading the hogs. Their chart is, is, uh, H A G. Kind of just waffling here in the middle, so it's not a good tradable one. All right, now, the stocks that are making big, big money are the fry pan bottoms. So we're going to spend time tonight on fry pan bottoms and breakouts. This one was an easy one. Uh, this is CZR. Nice fry pan bottom. Came up to the 200, pulled right back to the T-line. Just put a buy stop right here. You were in a breakout. Do you always get breakouts of this magnitude? No, not necessarily. But if you're in the uh, using candlestick signals and patterns, put yourself in a situation where the probabilities of being in the right place at the right time is so much greater. And I don't know why this is doing this. I don't even know if I've got the right one. SYRG? I don't know why we get the chart cut off. We also have DMND that had kind of this big rounding bottom and then this little fry pan bottom breakout today. Tells us there's probably still more upside. And then I know people have been buying or been in UEP, UEPS. Nice fry pan bottom, but it failed. However, notice they're bringing it right back up. If they bring it back up through the uh, 
uh, T line tomorrow. You want to be buying again because then you have this kind of little cup and handle. I'm still would anticipate uh, that your slingshot effect is going to take you up here to the 200 day moving average. Uh, some of these, uh, uh, these aren't. We'll get to some of those, uh, when we get into the, uh, okay, you never sold, Chuck. All right. We'll, we'll get, Tom, we'll get to some that are recommendations. I'm just trying to show some clean illustrations that I necessarily haven't been in because there's been too many of them. But we'll get to the ones that we are in. Uh, FF, again, exactly. This one, uh, oh, using this for an illustration. Show where the dimple was right here, where the breakout is. If you take this and take this right about the same level, uh, same area or length of time from here to here, from here to here is about where you're going to break, get a breakout, which we have. That's, so that's another little thing to watch for. When you can see that you're in a fry pan bottom, dimple, fry pan bottom, just measure it from here to here to approximately out here, and you'll get the area where it should be breaking out. Uh, Randy, fry pan bottom, J-hook classics. Now, notice what we have here today, an inverted hammer, and we'll get to why inverted hammers. If this opens positive, you want to be buying immediately. Uh, tomorrow. And Crow, another one is setting up. There's your J hook pattern. Now you got your fry pan bottom here. If this breaks out through this level, it's got a whole new, uh, new trend to contend with. All right, so the ones that we're making money with is, uh, one was UNXL. Oh, this is can go back to the the inverted hammer. Um, notice the inverted hammer right here. We had doji, doji, left right combo, doji, inverted hammer. Anytime you see an inverted hammer in the closer to the overbought, oh, I'm sorry, oversold area, and they open up positive the next day. Remember the psychology of the uh, bears is the bears have been happy. Now they're starting to get worried but relieved by the time they take it back down to the bottom of the trading range that day. But if they open up positive the next day, the bears are saying, shoot, the bulls are still here, get me out of the way, and that starts the next strong uptrend. So in just kind of simple wave analysis or trend analysis, if we can draw a bottom through, uh, let me do this again, trend tools, trend channel. We can kind of draw a bottom or top through here. Kind of got this. Whoops, I could have done it from down here. Oh, this is going to be great. We kind of got this parallel uh, channel heading up, which means this move here could go all the way to the top of this trend channel. Let me see if which could make a very good profitable trade. But notice what we, how we started this. Doji, doji, left right combo, doji. Big inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. Now notice what we also had today on the pullback on Friday. Today we basically had a kicker type signal. Not a kicker signal because they took it back down, but a kicker type signal. And I say a kicker type signal in the sense that uh, even though they had this tail to the downside, they gapped it up and opened it right here and went positive uh, for most of the day. That tells me there's still going to be uh, 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 more upside. Uh, do you place all the trades that you recommend? Uh, no, not because they aren't good trades. It's because I've only got a limited amount of uh, funds, and if I've already got 10 positions on and I've got one that I've got to replace, and I've made three recommendations for today. If all three of them are working, I can't get it all three of them. I've got to just pick out the one I think is going to be the best one. So, to answer the question, I'm usually in all the trades that we've recommended. Uh, and if there's something that I'm in 
that is better than what I recommended, then I'll probably recommend that, that the next day. Is my mic acting up? All right. Limited amount of funds, I mean limited amount that if, if I only got X number of dollars to trade, um, that I, uh, yeah, I can only buy a certain number of uh, positions. So if we're in an uptrend and the market is good and we're recommending two or three stock positions every day, that's 30 positions over a 10-day period. Well, I'm only holding 10 of those because that's that's my limit, or 10 or 12, uh, depending on the account size. So that means there's going to be some that I recommend that I don't get into, not because there's anything wrong with them. I just don't have enough funds to go out and get into every position or I wouldn't want to be in every position. All right, here's a, uh, another one. Again, for that inverted hammer, we had a bullish day in EN, uh, INVN, which was a strong strong buy indicator, which also shows us that we're probably in another J-hook pattern. So we've had wave one, wave two, wave three, wave one, wave two, probably starting wave three. That's a that's a very strong chart, and it's a strong chart in the sense that it's gone up 50% over the last uh, two months, but it's not an overbought stock because they've taken profits, moved it up, taken profits, moved it up, taken profits. So it's a healthy uh, healthy move to the upside. Uh, let's see another one, WHX. Now, it used to be when we started the chat room years ago, I would put out the stock recommendations because everybody was looking for the best ones. I would say now 50, 60 percent of the recommendations I come up with are already ones that have somebody has discussed in the uh, chat room each day. So I think David L. found this one, but pulled back. He started buying it back in here. Uh, I started buying just as it started this uh, up, upward curl, the slow curve. Let's make it bigger. So this is the power play right now. This slow curve is occurring on dozens and dozens of stocks. Um, you, you do put in the trades that you buy and you close. Uh, yes, I try to, Ziggy, I try to put them in, uh, uh, during the day. And I say try. Usually I'm doing stuff that it is trying to teach an old dog new tricks to remember to go ahead and, uh, let people know what I'm buying and what I'm selling. So I, I try to show what I'm buying and at what price and why and then, uh, why I've closed out. All right, so this one's acted well. This broke out nicely, a very good uh, uh, price move. Um, ESI is another one. Let's see. E Buying this one. Because it's also been involved with this kind of this T-line crunch. Popped up, pulled back, and now supported right on the T-line in the 50 after this big signal right here. Now, we showed this one uh, last week, and I'll do it again just to illustrate one important point about candlestick analysis. Is that the bigger the signal, the more likely there's been a change of investor sentiment. And so if you look at this chart, if I can get it down to the point where we can see the whole thing. If you look at this chart and you say, is there a significant buy signal on this whole chart? This one stands out like a sore thumb. So that's the probabilities are extremely strong that this has been the change of investor sentiment at the bottom. So we could start seeing it uh, pop back up with the potential of getting back up to the uh, 200-day moving average. So, very good chart. Um, let's see. 
What are we going to announce? Just... Do you recommend options? Yes. So we'll get to some of those here also. Um, oh, the you know, or the the uh, oh yeah. Each morning, if you're getting the morning comments and the afternoon comments, whatever I'm recommending that day will be there. Plus, the night before, if you go to the members area and hit stock picks, you'll see a two-minute video on what we think the market's doing and two or three stock picks. Um, so that's where you get prepared uh, uh, for the next day. So you kind of uh, gives you time to kind of analyze why that's being picked. And let's see, ESI is 10% of the amount, not 11%. Chuck, you got me there. I don't know what that means. It looks overbought on the stochastics. Well, where are the stochastics right now? Are they in the overbought area? No. So this one's this one's still doing a pattern. And again, we're on our probably a, uh, a rounding bottom or a fry pan bottom. Where is your uh, stochastics probably going to be when it breaks out? It's probably going to be in the overbought uh, condition. Yes, we're still working on the scanning formula for a fry pan bottom. So although the formula is there, most of the time you're going to spot them early so that if you see something setting up that looks like a fry pan bottom, you just put it on your watch list and, and keep watching it until it gets to fruition. Let's see. Okay, yep, yeah, we're still working on it. All right, so let's zip along here. Uh, that was ESI GMED. Also broke out of this kind of little rounding uh, slow curve. This is exactly the spot we want to start watching for these is when they're ready to break out. Um, all right, so uh, anyways, uh, this breakout formula, or not formula, but breakout pattern is extremely strong as far as setting up for when things are about ready to get exuberant buying, and usually it's right at the breakout level. Uh, GMED uh, was good for today. AOL even was uh, had a good chart where it had kind of your fry pan bottom and your slow curve cup and handle closed above the uh, 50, and then bam, they, they took off. Now you've got a big island reversal in AOL, which means you're probably going higher. Um, Uh, let's see. The problem is how long do you wait? Do you want to wait minimum and maximum number of candles in what range for the bottom channel for a fry pan bottom? Ah, uh, yes, and that's why trying to write formulas for some of these is difficult versus what we can see very quickly and very visually uh, on the chart. So. This was a nice uh, cup and handle on AOL. STZA. Now, the reason I'm concentrating on these right now, I don't know what the heck that was. What? Why did I have that? <laughs> that doesn't look like the right one. So I'm going to go zipping right along here. Angie's List. Another one that had a nice little slow curve and then started popping out as soon as it broke through this level right here. So this is what we're trying to train everybody's eye to look at is if you can see this slow curve, even though you're up in the overbought area, if you're getting up toward a resistance level uh, where everybody else can watch where it's breaking out, 
That's where you want to be prepared to be able to buy immediately or very early in the trend. Let me see if that was it. That wasn't it. Let's see, it's T R Z. That wasn't it. So let's try S dot S T R Z. Eh, I'll find something else. Uh, F V E. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your J hook pattern. There's your breakout. Tells us there's probably going to be more upside on this one on wave three. Let's see. I'm going to put some little stars next to some of these. An F U L. FUL is kind of the same, little rounding bottom, also kind of a wedge formation, gap up, tells us uh, we're in the stepping stone type of move. Now we're in the next uh, wave up on the stepping stone. But it started with this little kind of real slow rounding bottom, gap up through the resistance level. Tells you everybody was jumping in. AB. Another little rounding bottom, the classic. Fry pan bottom, strong price move. Pull back, J hook pattern, fry pan bottom, breakout. That one should still move up uh, four or five points. Do you agree with IBD that a fry pan bottom should be at least seven weeks? No. No, I've made tons of money on a seven day. Fry pan bottom. Fry pan bottom is not a length of time. It's not a depth of magnitude. It's a visual slow rounding curve where the investor sentiment starts getting positive coming out the other side. JSO, one of the uh, uh, solar companies, it's starting this little rounding bottom looking like a J hook pattern. Notice what it did right here in this little rounding bottom. Broke out to the upside. And first solar, I think, uh, you know, it's more of a uh, you know, inverted hammer, inverted hammer, bullish com confirmation, double doji uh, confirmation. This one still has more upside. So notice kind of a little rounding curve here that slung it up to the next move. Now we might be uh, getting ready to go into wave three. An LPX, also kind of a, a gray or a J hook type pattern, but notice what starts the uptrend. This little belt hold type signal. So this one is sitting right here on the breakout area. Uh, this one you can be buying. Now somebody asked about options. This is one I'd look to see what the options were, because we know probably your first move or breakout move can be on somewhat the same trajectory or the same trend line. So it could be you get a two, three point move out of this very quickly, which means if this one has uh, $21 options or $22 options, you buy them. And if you know it's breaking out right now, those are type of options you can get in at $1 one day and get out the next day at $2. Was it S T R Z A? S T R Z A. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that. Anyways, uh, Yeah, um, okay, I don't know why I can't get it over here, but anyways, we'll, 
there's more to look at. Yeah, got MDP. Another one that's got the move, the uh, rounding bottom, the breakout today. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this with the anticipation of another two or three points real quick in it. And I say real quick, uh, what am I doing here? I'm going to get rid of this thing. Real quick, these things break out as we, this is the whole point of this whole demonstration is to show you how fast these breakouts occur. Um, so we've got a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave one, wave two. Looks like this one can be bought on positive trading or look at your call options on this one. Uh, PCS. This one, you can see there's been a nice fry pan bottom right up to the 50, pulls back, does a handle. And now the slow curve told us that they weren't staying below the 50 anymore. Let's make this bigger enough where we can see it. Had kind of a doji sandwich, which means there's more upside, so that's the one that has a high probability of heading higher. And uh, what was that? PCS. Fry pan bottom right here at the breakout level. So, i Remember, we go through a lot of training where we say, all right, we want to be buying the buy signal in the oversold area. Fry pan bottoms and the uh, pattern breakouts are different. We want to be buying as the uh, stochastics are now getting up into the overbought area. That tells you that the enthusiasm is built back up into that, that price. Here's kind of a cup and handle, a shallow fry pan bottom pulls back kind of now as a scoop pattern. This one you can be buying on positive trading, anticipating a slingshot effect. Where should dojis be for a doji sandwich? Using closer to the lower end of the trading range or the, uh, in this area coming up. Um, the higher, yeah, the higher they occur, the less uh, likely you're going to go after them as a, as a, uh, or should go after them as a, uh, doji sandwich. Scenario, again, of a slow curve right on the T-line. This one you can be buying if it breaks out through the uh, the upper uh, resistance level. That was PPC. Is this CRB? Well, that may not be it. Maybe it's ORB. Yeah, another slow rounding bottom. Now it's starting to break out to the upside. Let's see. D O L E. Little rounding bottom here. Look for some more upside. So these have been uh, really effective recently for finding those big price move breakouts. So it gives you. Clear information, the bulls are taking control, and they're getting wound up. Now, do we expect all the time to see a big move like this? We're hoping, but usually we're hoping for something that would look more like this, where the trajectory picks up pretty quick. Um, Uh, uh, Pappy, I don't know what names you give them. They're just, uh, they're just patterns where you can see what the evidence is of the, uh, uh, investor sentiment building up. MLNX also did this big belt hold at the bottom of this downtrend. Continue to hold this as long as it, uh, stays above the T line. Now, we've got some 5560 calls. On a call spread that we're getting very close to expiration, we're still a good ways away. So if they don't pop this tomorrow, 
Then you will start. Or I'm going to be starting to roll over some of those spreads over into the March March time frame. And uh, let's see. And that same uh, scenario was occurring in our uh, recommendation on ESI. That big belt hold left right combo. I'm sorry, not belt hold bullish engulfing left right combo. And this T line squeeze. Uh, this breakout has uh, got good potential because of everything it's setting up. But the, uh, this signal right here, the belt hold signal, told us that we took out all the last of the selling. Even though it hasn't gotten started yet, it's moving like it should. And there's a good possibility because this was a signal, you could always get another big day like that because that's, uh, that's, that's kind of what that pressure is building up to. And KCAP, another one that just did a belt hold, consolidation, and now trading back up. This one I wouldn't be afraid of going after on, on some positive trading. All right, that's pretty much uh, the rounding curves. Uh, again, we've been making big money off of these for uh, a while. Uh, back, no, Shaw. Well, 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 what's happening here? So, I think it was over here somewhere. Uh, was that it? Oh, I thought there was a slow curve on this one. may have been further back. There it is. Slow curve. Pop to the upside, made some good profits there. Now we're getting this type of action. If it opens positive and trades up through the 50, you're probably going to get a quick pop out of this one. So the reason I'm looking for the ones that have quick pops, obviously, it's a lot bigger profits in a much shorter time. And the shorter time span that you can be setting these up for and making a quick profit with the market up here toward the overbought situation, there's not a whole lot of time to start sitting in something that may take another 10 days to develop. We want to see the ones that are just in the process now of breaking out. MFC, there's another slow curve. Now, what usually will happen on this is if you see that your top, you're getting to the top of your trend, they'll usually start taking it as a 45 degree off of here, right up, up still up that uh, Trend channel. Uh, Sam, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, no, that usually, if they break this out, that usually acts as no resistance. Um, if they can break into the, uh, uh, the gap area, I tell you there's no resistance and it gets very quick back up to fill that gap. Uh, Tom, I, I'm a swing trader, so my stock trades are usually two to ten trading days on average, depending on the market conditions. And then commodities, uh, uh, I might even day trade commodities or not as a uh, rule. I'm usually a day trader in, or a swing trader in commodities. But if I get big profits in a uh, commodity trade, which happens much more often because of the leverage, uh, I'll take it. During the day. All right, and then let's see. What do we just look at this? Uh, oh, that was MFE. We're looking at E L L I. Bullish engulfing, doji doji, bullish confirmation, breaking this downtrend of the T line. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one because this is the type of pattern that you have kind of a flat handle here that they could take it right back up and get into this handle. So this move here could be a good 20% uh, 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 move just to get back up to the, to the channel. And uh, let's see, Zag. Zag also kind of a scoop type setup. 
and they're back up above the team line. Notice what they did on Friday. They took it down, but got right back in. And that tells you pretty much the Bulls had uh, sopped up a lot of the sellers out there. And when that was over, then the Bulls are starting to take control. Medfast, little morning star signal. If this opens positive, you can buy it. Just watch for the downtrend. But this is a, uh, looks like you're at the bottom of the channel. You can draw a line right down through here and pretty much a parallel line right down through there. Uh, that one you can uh, be looking at for a, a trade. Zolt. Uh, the bigger the signal, the higher the probability there's been a change of investor sentiment. Got a big, huge morning star signal. Now they're taking it up. Stochastic's not in the overbought area yet. So if they open this positive, that means you've probably got a wave one, wave two, 200 not acting as a resistance anymore, starting wave three. Again, because of the magnitude of that Signal. First of all, you've got a bullish engulfing signal. Secondly, you've got a, uh, uh, a morning star signal following a big hammer. Uh, so there's a uh, good probability this one's going higher. Wendy's, uh, somebody uh, showed this or asked about this in the uh, chat room. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your kind of your J hook with a gap up after an inverted hammer through the T line, which means if they open up positive, they're still taking it higher. And all you do is use a close back below the doji as your stop. And uh, CSX. Whoa. Uh, very nice uh, J-hook pattern. Use this for an illustration because notice what this one did. A gap up after a left-right combo through the T-line, hugged the T-line, broke through the uh, 200, came up, pulled right back, smack dab, back down to test it, left-right combo, starting back up, and gapped it up through the recent high. So that's kind of an illustration to say if they are gapping it up and they know the resistance level is right close by, that means they have no intentions of stopping at the resistance level. They're going to take it much higher, which means they break this out tomorrow. This becomes your wave one. Now you're gapping it up again for a wave three. You probably have another uh, two, three points to the upside on this one. Our jet. Another one where they gapped it up wave one, pulled it back, left-right combo. Uh, this you can definitely be buying on positive trading tomorrow. That's a very good-looking chart. And these airlines have to be making money. Just... Jam packed every single flight. Now, here's one I wanted to show as an illustration. Where, what do you do at the bottom? You buy on a gap up. What do you look for at the top? You look for that exuberant buying. Now, if it trades lower tomorrow, you definitely want to take profits because that tells you that that's that's the exhaustion up there at the top. Um, uh, Mick, well, usually if, if the doji is the your signal that they move up from where it opened and closed the previous day, that's where you want to see if it closes back below that level, the open and close, you want to be out of it. Because that was telling you where there was a, uh, uh, oh, uh, that's where the bears are supposed to be taking control if they, uh, they open it positive. And if they can bring it back down through that level and close it below it, that means the uh, bulls aren't taking control. Uh, let's see, what is this one? Icon. 
Another good J hook with a pullback, left right combo, a bullish engulfing after a hammer signal, taking it back up. That one's got probably at least a 45 degree coming off of there, same trajectory as what the uh, previous trend was. And with that idea, what usually happens is if you have a steady uptrend and then they break it down and turn it around, they'll come back up into that steady uptrend and then continue it just like the trend and all this was, was kind of a hiccup in between. So this is why we've recommended buying, uh, I'm buying the March uh, calls on this one. This is DDD because it's had a nice steady uptrend and pullback. Where is this next price move logically going to? Probably somewhere right up in here, which would be in this trajectory of the uh, uh, the previous trend, which would be a good, strong move. And then wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't doubt seeing it move steadily or as a continued up uptrend. Uh, Francis, this chart program right tonight is CQG. We also use TCNet for our scanning. We also use Metastock for our scanning. Uh, use uh, Ninja Trader. Uh, Ninja charts also. Um, so it all depends on which charts I happen to bring up in the morning. Good to your tire. This is an example of when they move away from moving averages, where do they move back to? Right back to the moving averages. Especially on the 50 for the longer term. Gap up through the 50. Came all the way up to we had a bearish engulfing. Confirmed. And stayed pretty much in a slow downtrend till we hit smack dab on the 50-day moving average. And now we've seen a, a doji bullish uh, move from there. That tells me wave one, wave two, starting wave three. And what uh, is... Uh, I see your questions. I'm not ignoring them. I'll get back to them as we get finished here. SWC, I would suspect it moves up to the trajectory here pretty quick and then does the the 45 degree off of there. Uh, PAA was another one that somebody in the chat room was questioning about. Uh, also doing that little morning star signal. Uh, wouldn't doubt that it, oh, that's palladium. That's just fine. How do you do? PAA. Came back. Little morning star signal. Gap up. Tells me, uh, wave one, wave two, wave three. Wave one, wave two, starting wave three. Let's see. Uh, no, they don't dilute their stock. It's, that's There's a difference between a stock split and the stock dilution. A stock split is only going to change the price. A stock dilution is when they put out new shares or more shares. So, um, there's different reasoning for having different price stocks. If you're a growth company and you want everybody to know about you and, uh, uh, get you rocking and rolling. You want your price, stock price, to be in an area where most of the public isn't afraid to buy it. If you're an institutional stock where people aren't going to be trading it, like an IBM or uh, something like that, then you don't care. You want your price to be a high price so that the institutions are buying it, not uh, being whipped around by the general public. Um, and obviously stocks like Berkshire um, that are trading at whatever it is, 1600 you're not going to trade that one. That's for institutions to put in. So um, there's a lot of times where uh, a stock will get out of the price range that it wants to be trading in. So they'll split it three for two or two for one to get it back into that, that area. So it's, it's not diluting the stock. It's just uh, – more stock at half the price or two-thirds the price. Let's see. GPK. 
Uh, the stock price, if it splits three for two, the option prices are uh, broken down equivalently. So, uh, um, yeah, so if you had a option on a $40 stock price and they decide to split two for one, now those, now you have two options on a $20 stock uh, price. Here's another case where you have a slow, steady uptrend and you see it gap up in an overbought condition. Start taking some profits, even if it's taking off half the trade. Now, this what I do in this type of situation, if they gap it open and start taking it up, put your stop one tick below where it open. The rationale being if they came back down through there, that's probably telling you that was the exhaustion up there, and it's going to form some sort of candlestick sell signal. Uh, you can't ever tell that, Denise. Uh, yeah, it... it doesn't really affect it now. Back in the days when I was so trading, whenever a stock price or somebody said they were doing a stock split, as soon as we saw the announcement come off the uh, Reuters, everybody was buying because that stock would jump 10% because of that announcement. Now, that announcement of a stock split had nothing to do with making the price move better. It just happened to be that everybody was buying when they knew there was a stock split in effect. Let's see. What do I got here? WDC. Another uh, J-hook type pattern. And notice what we did today, a doji. And what do we have as far as a simple rule of a doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open it. So if they open this positive, two things, three things are going to happen. First of all, we know it's going to move positive. Secondly, a doji sandwich has the potential of moving this, at least this magnitude. And if it did, that's the third thing. It would be breaking out, continuing the J-hook uh, type pattern, which means they're, they're going to probably take it up even further. And IOC is another one that has a nice uh, kind of little uh, uh, morning star right off the 50, broke out through this resistance level, kind of a little mini scoop here. Anticipation, they probably could take it up here to the uh, 200. So very simple. If this one opens positive tomorrow, Got the potential of a doji sandwich, which would take you up into this area. Okay, that's about all I've got for tonight. But uh, right now, it's looking for the slow rounding bottoms or slow rounding curves because they're the ones that are breaking out the uh, the best. Um, oh, Craig, uh, let's see. Some of the ones... Now, this isn't uh, set in stone yet because I have to do a full analysis, but... Uh, uh, our jet looks good with this uh, setup, a left-right combo uh, in a fry pan bottom uh, J-hook type pattern. Uh, F5 or FVE, another one that has a wave one, wave two, doji gap up, breakout. This tells me this will probably move up the same magnitude as this right here. And uh, you know, hold on to your individual stock questions until I tell Jim to do the double line. A, let's see. I was going to do something. What was it? Let's see. Oh, favorites. Okay. Uh, IOC is another one where I would probably be going after the calls and probably the March 65s, 6750s, or 70s. Based upon, again, people ask, well, do you use a three month chart, six month chart? The, the chart isn't, uh, the length of the chart is not uh, relevant. I really, what I'm looking at is right here. Now, if I like what I see right here, I want to see, is it staying above a moving average? Is it breaking out through a resistance level? Then what does the longer-term chart look like? Whoops, that's not a lot. Well, the longer-term chart tells us we started from up in this area, came down. Now we're starting this slow basing period, and this may have been the... Uh, the support telling us the 50-day moving average was asking that support heading higher. 
Where's our first resistance level? Possibly the 200, but that's not that uh, far away. So if it opened positive tomorrow and did a doji sandwich, there's a good possibility if it broke out through this level, they're going to take it right up to the 200-day uh, uh, moving average very quickly. Uh, it all depends on what what strategy I'm uh, I'm using. If I think uh, over the next six weeks this can have a nice steady run, um, I may buy at the money calls. If I think it's a situation where there's a breakout potential, I'm trying to think of one. Yeah. So, uh, I'll come up with one here in a second. But let's say I think there's a big upside potential to it. And it's just starting. Uh... Uh, for example, I might uh, I might look at this one and say, all right, uh, I'm going to look at the 1750s, which I hope are inexpensive, because if this one does move, hopefully we'll get a quick pop like this to get it there and make those move very quickly. So it all depends on what, how much time we have left, where the stock is trading, and what we think the upside potential of that stock is. Some of them are going to be measured, meaning coming out of a J-hook, we can see that it's got a four-point or a five-point move to it. Then we can buy the lower calls, sell the upper calls, and get a good spread trade off of it. Uh, if the uh, Dow 30 sells off, yes, these patterns now. A lot of these patterns will get soggy. But also, another benefit to identifying the patterns is these patterns are developing based upon something probably irrelevant to what the market is doing. So that's why even when the market is going up steady, we like the patterns because if they break out, there, there's something, the forces in there are moving up much stronger. With, so on the other hand, if the market gets, in general, turns soggy, there's probably still going to be some follow-through on some of these charts. Now, they may not go up as far as we expect them, but as the market starts turning over, the uh, pattern situations may still be trading positive for one, two, or three more days until they give up. But at least you're still, you can see the market's heading down. You can see the stocks that you're owning are starting to slow down. So you can start taking profits and still be in a profitable area instead of the market selling off and the uh, normal stock prices dropping off fairly quickly as soon as the market uh, trades off. The patterns will still have some residue buying going on when the uh, even when the market turns over. Oh, let's see what else. All right, stock prices, okay. Uh, okay, a any more question questions on candlesticks? Would you say the J-hook has more of a rounding formation than the Western flag? Oh, uh, yeah, the flag is more of a flat trading pullback, whereas, uh, yeah, the J-hook is a, uh, is a, uh, is a rounding bottom situation. What strike prices? I think I did the 70s in March. I can't remember. I paid five bucks for them. And I don't remember which ones they were. But I can. Hold on. Let me see if I can do this with. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. What did I do on the uh, DDDs? I bought. The uh, 70, the March 70 calls at $5. Okay, all right, let's see if, do you normally wait for the price to break out above the left peak of a fry pan bottom before buying, or is it possible to buy as soon as the price pierces the T-line? 
Uh, anywhere that I can see that the buying is starting to pick up uh, steam. Now, there's going to be times when, uh, I'm trying to think of some that, there's going to be times where you can see, uh, uh, trying to think of one, where you can start seeing the uh, trajectory of the fry pan bottom starting to head up. And when it's heading up to get to its target, it may be 10% to get there. So that becomes a good safe trade that I know that if it moves up to the resistance level where it should be breaking out and fails, at least I've made 8 10% by the time I get out. Um, on the other uh, hand, if I think we're getting toppy in the market and I don't want to be holding on to something for four or five days, to see whether it's going to break out through a fry pan bottom. I'll wait until I see the uh, fry pan bottoms get right back up to the left, uh, the breakout point, and then start buying at that point. Can you show us an example of a stock that is toppy? All uh, right. Uh, that is toppy. Well, the what we did the other day was we shorted DWA because it was getting... Toppy up here. Notice it did a shooting star, bury some golfing, and started pulling back. Uh, so it told us it failed the uh, T-line. And so I covered it today only because we were getting toward the oversold area and the market was acting strong. So I took profits on it. It was trading right about here. Now, if we wake up tomorrow and the pre-market futures on the Dow are down and this is opening lower, I can always reshort it. But the probabilities were that the Dow looked like it was starting to move higher. Uh, if the Dow breaks out through this level and starts up in the next wave, that means a lot of buying are going to come back in. That means the shorts probably uh, aren't going to have a whole lot of oomph to them. They'll start either trading flat or moving up. Um, so I want to take that money and go someplace else with it. Um, O's dead tonight. Posted tonight. I don't know. Is that posted tonight? Uh, JC, a, uh, dimple is kind of a, just a little, uh, flip flop. Where was the one that we were looking at that had a dimple in it? The dimple is that you use the halfway point. It's usually a, an aberration of the current uh, uh, trend that it either pops up a little bit or slides down a little bit. All right, so that's, uh, anyways, that's what a dimple is. Um, when it was recommended as a buy coming out of the slow curve, anytime we buy something, what are we watching for? We're watching for the resistance levels. So once it got up here and did a uh, shooting star, and then the next day did a bearish engulfing signal, where do we think it was going to come back to? Probably coming back to test the T-line. Was it going to stay up there? That we didn't know, but it was safer to go ahead and take profits right here. Then once it came back down here, if it started doing buy signals, you could always buy it back. But the fact that it never could really get started again and closed below the T-line was time to go short on this one. Uh, yes, here's the dimple right here. So if this is your fry pan bottom, there's your center point right here with this dimple. Something that told you that they moved way out or sometimes it's even a buy signal that tells you you could be coming back up, but then all of a sudden goes flat again, and you can tell that that was just the halfway point of the uh, fry pan bottom. Uh, the moving averages, the 200 simple, the 50 simple, and the 20 simple. Those are all used by major money managers around the world. Um, we have the advantage of seeing what's going on exactly at those levels. Um, 
Oh, to uh, because that's where where the big money is going to make their decisions. We can see immediately what's going on with their decisions. The black one is the eight exponential moving average, which is called the T line, which uh, obviously have heard tonight that it's a very good, or we use it uh, for a very effective trend analysis. Okay, and with that, uh, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. And in seven more seconds, do the next double line. All right. Scroll way past me here. All right. ZN. Whoops. S dot. ZN. That's your scoop type pattern. Big flat handle, came down, bullish signal, came right back up to the handle. This one you can be buying on positive trading because you're going to get the slingshot effect zooming out of here. That's a nice looking chart. MNST. That one's kind of a blase chart. There's nothing there to make you want to buy it. So if you were short, you stay short. Now, this is a, a perfect example of demonstrating that when it comes back up through the T-line and then comes back and closes below, get right back out of it because it's got to stay above the T-line to stay in it. So all we can see right now is it's in a slow, steady downtrend. XXIA, another one that's in kind of a, a, a J-hook type pattern, get a doji today, which means if it opens positive tomorrow, you definitely want to be a buyer, especially if it comes back up through uh, the recent highs. Uh, so this whole, whole range right here, if it breaks through that, uh, you've got a good runner. Um, AG. Uh, S dot A G. Did a kicker signal to the downside. So if you were long, I told you to get back out of it. Any time you're in a long position and it's getting up toward the overbought area, and they have the capability of gapping it down below the previous day's open, probably the first thing you want to do is sell it immediately. Because now what is it telling you? It's telling you this downtrend is still intact. Uh, continued. And this one you can go short, as a matter of fact, using this downward channel down here as your, uh, as your next target. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. ah, just taking a drink. Okay. ALJ's got a good chart to it. This one's got that little rounding bottom. Another little rounding bottom. Took it up, pulled back, taking it up. That's why I kind of like this one too, the uh, IOC. They're all in the same industry, uh, starting back up. Uh, AMD had a good looking chart. Let's make this one bigger. All right, notice that the channels, you hit the bottom of the channel, did a doji, gap up, bullish harami over here. So your expected target, draw a line through the tops, so that's where they're probably aiming it. RTN. Oops, S dot R T N. Left right combo. First target is back to the uh, T line. So here's a question. Do we buy before it closes above the T line? Well, if you can see it's moved a good distance, distance away from the T line. Remember, the first criteria for candlestick analysis is the signals. So, if the signal is occurring way below the T-line, the T-line now becomes your first target. 
So if it pops back up here and fails, you know the T-line is still in effect. You get right back out. If it goes through like this one did, you know you're still in an uptrend and you continue to hold. I would suspect. Notice your big wedge up here and they broke this way. You're probably going to move right back up uh, to that wedge level. YGE, another one of the solars. This one, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. RVBD. At this one, you can go short. Uh, when they gap it down, notice they did a spinning top doji. They're going to move it in the direction how they open it. They're going this way. Uh, stochastic still heading down. I'd... Uh, you can be shorting that one. CLDX, there's your left or your uh, belt hold. As long as it stays above the T line, you stay with it. And PPHM, there's your morning star signal, but it's flattened out. If this doesn't get it started, meaning if they can't break this up above the two, uh, what is that, 225 very quickly, then you're probably in. Your slow uh, fry pan bottom with this being the dimple. So if this is the first half, the second half, you start watching for a buy signal out here somewhere. And IMAX. Oh, something. I M A X. S dot I M A X. There's your J-hook again. Fry pan, wave one. J-hook, wave three. Stay with this one. Natural gas. Natural gas uh, also failed here at this uh, resistance level, which was the uh, 50. Tried to do some buying today, but uh, you're still in a downtrend. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't depend on this. This may be just an update during a downtrend. There's, this is not a signal. So right now, I'd consider as long as you've had a sell signal, which is this evening star type signal, a close below the T line. Stochastic's not in the oversold area. You probably have some more downside. S PWR. Got to remember, a cradle usually happens at the bottom of a trend. This is more of a cradle type setup, but it's a uh, uh, more of a, you know, yeah, I don't know what you would call it, uh, uh, but it's it's important in the fact to be in a uh, 45 degree trajectory up here. Then you just use the halfway point of this candle as your stop. Uh, KRO, we did. That's got the fry pan bottom. Except if I was buying this, I'd wait for it to break out uh, through this level. The reason for that is it may take four or five more days for it to get here. We don't know what the market's going to be doing in four or five days. So I'd rather pay up knowing that they're at a level that tells me important information, which is if they break through, they're, they're running it, uh, instead of having to wait four or five days to see what they're going to do with it. C-R-E-E, -E. there's your kind of your uh, cradle pattern gap up. Now you're on your 45 degree. And Apple, Apple's gotten above the T-line. Now it needs to break through this downtrending channel. So it's trying to do that right now. Continue to stay long until you see a sell signal. Uh, right now I'd use the T-line as your stop. S-K-U-L. That's your kind of your your uh, you no know, kind of your flat handle stoop type action, but you've kind of had an inverted hammer doji bullish confirmation. This one you could be buying on positive trading with your first target uh, up here toward the fifty. And EXO has been acting well, just consolidated a little bit today. Again, this one kind of had that uh, rounding curve up. 
and then a big breakout on Friday. I'm looking for a 45 degree, which would put you in the same trajectory of what it was before they started doing these little profit-taking areas. HUN also is broken out through this level. Look for a 45 degree off of this one. QCOM. Uh, this one looks like it's in a slow, steady uptrend, and that's kind of the description of it is a slow, steady uptrend. So uh, you're still along this trajectory, uh, and your stochastics are running out of steam. It's got to break out quick, or otherwise uh, you're probably going to see it roll over and get caught back in this trend channel. At this point, I'd be taking profits. If I still thought it was heading higher, I'd get out of the position. If I see, all, see any weakness tomorrow, and then just put a buy stop up here at 68. If it comes up through that level, uh, we know they're, they're still breaking it out. UNP, also setting up for this little rounding bottom. This one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying or getting buying calls on it. And Union Pacific, that's a uh, biggie. And AEP, AEP looks like it's trying to set up for its next J-hook. You could be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. Just use the T-line as your stop. Q-Logic. Ah. What do you mean that symbol is not found? Let's see. S dot Q. Logic. All right, so this one's doing kind of a little rounding bottom, the T-line squeeze. This is very simple. If they break it up through the uh, 200, you buy immediately. Your stochastic is even really helping out on this one. You Notice you can't really get below the T-line. You had kind of that little dimple action here telling us that right around in the year where the breakout of that level of the 200 is, if it breaks through, you're going to get some running room. The reason you get some running room is everybody and their brothers watching the 200 to see what's going on. We know that as soon as it breaks through there, you want to be buying because that's where everybody's going to start jumping in. JetBlue, another one that needs to stay above the T-line, but you have had a left-right combo off the, uh, the 50. You're staying above the T-line, but it needs to open positive tomorrow to stay in it or get into it. A-L-L-T started up a little bit, but still needs something to get it out of this basing action. Uh, and then you also have to get through this downtrending channel. Uh, NC. Another one that has come back or came right back up, touched the 50, smack dab, I'm sorry, the 200, pulled right back, did a hammer, bullish harami. Uh, it's probably taking you right back up to the 50. I'm sorry, back up to the 200. Yeesh, you get off of that. How about older trades? Where are we with Enoch? Uh, oh, let's see, Enoch, a lot of these have been closed out because they came back down below the T-line. This one, uh, yeah, if, once it moved up here and started trading off, where was it heading to? Back to the T-line. It probably should have been closed out right in here. If you're going to buy it, I would be out of it, uh, which I am, but I'll be watching to see if it breaks this level here, then I'll be back in it. Uh, where are some of the other ones? Uh, HMY. Had an initial move, but it's closing back below the T-line. It's telling me closing back below the T-line today told you to be out of it, number one. And number two, look at the trajectory when it did close back there. Told you it was running out of steam. Now, if they do another bullish signal, you can always buy back. But the probabilities right now are saying it's getting tired. Uh, uh, it needs another buy signal to get, get moving. Key, this one. You just keep holding until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. NDZ. Whoops. S dot NDZ. Well, show spots. S dot NDZ. 
this one, that 45 degree, you stay with it. And Zales. This one was closed out with this closed. Yeah, that's kind of your evening star signal. Uh, so this one's been closed out. Now, this was actually closed out over here because you had your bearish Harami, and the next day it opened lower and started trading down, which meant they were coming back to the T-line. And it was also done on a day, I think, where the market was getting soft. So instead of risking it, it was closed out to wait for the next buy signal off of here, which it really hasn't had anything significant to show there's a buy signal. And Leapfrog. That one's staying up above the T-line, but it's kind of, uh, that one's kind of, uh, what do I want to say, uh, rough at this point. Really not a trend in it. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be long or short on this one. Not that you can't make some money on it, but the probability is trying to project which way it's going is so much greater than some of the other ones, the other charts. Radio Shack. This one, you can be buying on positive trading. Came up, hit the uh, 200, pulled back, came up above, used the 200 and the T-line as support, taking it back up. This one, you stay long until you see a sell signal. H-Z-N-P. Ah. Big move up, gap up, consolidation right back to the T-line. There's your stutter step. Now you can be buying this on positive trading and just use the 50 as your stop. And Seco, that's moving up nicely. Uh, kind of coming out of this rounding bottom. Probably the first target right now is uh, the 200. VELT, uh, nothing there yet until you see a strong signal that takes you up above the T-line. You had a doji today, so that makes it fairly easy that if they open this positive, they're moving in the direction of how they uh, opened it after a doji, which means they're probably taking up the T-line, past the T-line then. So that's when I'd be buying, but it needs to get up above that level. Randy, we did, uh, that's got a, uh, Fry pan bottom, J hook potential because you did an inverted hammer. If it opens positive, that's a high probability of taking it higher. So more than likely now your next target is the 200. Axe. Uh, it needs to get up above the T line and the 50. Right now it's running out of steam. And as you can see what it's been doing here for the last couple months, it's just been sideways. There's got to be something, you want something that has a trend to it. Uh, fast and all, stay long as long as it stays above the T-line, and this one makes it very easy tomorrow. Your stochastics are heading up, even though you're in the overbought area. If they open this positive, it's going to move in the direction of how they open it. It's going to do a, should do a, a doji sandwich, number one, and number three. It'd be breaking out through this level, telling us our uptrend still in progress. A run. This one needs uh, to get back up above the T-line. It did a left-right combo today. So you need the bullish confirmation of it getting back up above, uh, above the T-line. Whoops. What did I do here? LG. Uh, another little scoop type setup. But this has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it or to get some more upside to it. But probably have wave one, wave two. Need to see that strength to show wave three. And step. Another scoop type pattern. This one you can be buying. Just stay, uh, stay in it as long as it stays above the T-line. And TRMB. This one you stay short until you see a buy signal. The gap down through the T-line 
didn't hold at the 50. Stochastic's still heading down. You still have some more downside in this one. That was on TRMB. All right. Amazon. Stay short until you see a buy signal. And Taylor. Stay short until you see a buy signal. And uh, ARO. That one, uh, I wouldn't be long or short in is I mean there's no trend to it. Find a better place to put your money. Let's see S dot G A Rotro. Let's quit this. Uh what did that shut down? Okay. Apparently nothing here. What did I do? G A G A can be bought on positive trading tomorrow because it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji, which would be breaking out above this level right here. And CNI. Ah. S dot CNI. That's that rounding curve. Continue to hold this until you see a sell signal. MCHP, open lower but traded up. My stop on this one would have been right down here in this low. I would still suspect if they start trading this higher, you want to buy it because you'll be in that 45 degree, probably somewhat the same trajectory as coming out of here. Okay, MGM. Yep, S dot M G M. Uh, this one is in trouble. The bigger the signal, the higher the probability there's been a change of investor sentiment, which we're seeing on this big bearish Harami that closed back below the T line. If this one opens lower tomorrow, you want to start shorting it. And CNQ, S dot CNQ, there's a little left-right combo. This one you can be buying on positive trading, which tells you the bottom of the trend channel is holding, going back up toward the top of the trend channel. Uh, Sam, what do you do? Put the whole portfolio on here. All right. JNK. Uh, S dot JNK. Oh, one of the spiders, uh, high yield bonds. Uh, hasn't bottomed out yet, but it's trying to. You've got an inverted hammer, a little bullish left right combo. See if it starts uh, coming back up after that. And Bud. Nothing yet. Now, it did a left-right combo, but, but it needs bullish confirmation, obviously, which is the T-line. Um, If I was short, I'd stay short until I see this close above the T-line. ACAD got whacked the other day. Oh, let's see. I thought it got whacked more than this. But here's this one also has that uh, fry pan bottom, wave one, wave two. Now it needs bullish confirmation to tell you wave three is in progress. Oh, those are left-right combos. Okay. Now, this one just barely. Sears holding. This one, slow uptrend. Getting a little bit of a slow curve, which means they could probably take it up to the 200 if they pop it here. 
and LinkedIn. Gap up, coming out of that rounding bottom. Probably we'll see this move on a 45 degree for a little bit. And BBR. Why? Rim uh, is still uh, uh, still sloppy. Um, it's it's this one's hard to detect a trend. I mean, you may be caught sideways in here. So after the left right or the bearish engulf and after the hammer signal the other day, and it gapping down today. I don't know whether I'd, there's enough room to be short, but I wouldn't be long if it opens lower tomorrow. And probably overall, I wouldn't be trading it. It's just not a clean chart to be trading. Zenga. Stay with this as long as it stays in an uptrend. Um, uh, Sam, I've done a uh, video on what I think are the highest probability trades. The first one, obviously, is your best friend, the gap up doji or doji gap up in an oversold area. The next one behind that is your doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, your left-right combo. So I put a great, uh, uh, again, trying to quantify them a little bit. Uh, the left-right combo is right there at the top, uh, the first, first one or two. Bunk bed. Got me there, JD. Bunk bed. Crow. Uh, again, I would. I'm looking at this. I'm going to be buying this one more if it gets up to the uh, the twenty-one dollar or the twenty-fifty range. All right. Uh, up some more. HD. HD is hard to trade or want to trade. This is an institutional stock. It's in a slow, steady uptrend, uh, but I wouldn't trade it. And I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just a slow, steady uptrend. This is a long-term hold. Yeah, the railroads were all looking good. Uh, um, CSX. Nah, S, uh, CSX. Yeah, it's got that good uh, J-hook pattern to it. Uh, uh, TJ left-right is a uh, doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. That doji is like the little left jab. The uh, bullish engulfing is like big roundhouse. That's a very strong buy signal. Uh, doji spinning top, okay. Okay. Um, Left-right combo is a doji followed by a bullish bearish. All right. Is that your 12 signal video? No. That's a uh, the 12 major signals is tw uh, uh, each signal being uh, explained in detail. And then uh, the uh, – oh, Major uh, or the uh, signal patterns slash patterns quantified. Which ones are the best? What happened to the kicker is your best or your favorite signal. Uh, it is a favorite signal, uh, but it was kind of the based on the frequency as well as the power of it. So um, the doji at the bottom followed by a gap up has probably got a lot more frequency than than seeing a kicker signal. But the kicker signal is right up there. And price line, this one's also doing that little uh, J-hook type pattern. This one you stay with as long as it stays above the T-line. All right, one more. TBT. Uh, TBT. This one has to get back up above the T-line, except notice what's happening. Your stochastic's heading down. 
So if you draw a line right through the bottoms here, it looks like it could come back down to this level for the next couple of days. Oh, an elevated, uh, okay, I get you, uh, J.D., a bunk bed, all right. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm trying to remember that bunk bed. That's it. We needed a name for that pattern. So, ZS, if you have problems downloading something, just email Abe and he'll, He'll help you with it. Okay. All right. And last one. NSC. Nice uh, J-hook type pattern. Uh, wouldn't be afraid to be buying that one. Okay. Uh, market. If it opens positive tomorrow, you see the pre-market futures opening positive, start buying immediately. Uh I'll have probably two or three out for tomorrow that if I see the markets open positive, I'm jumping in immediately. You know, And that's the nice thing about candlesticks. If the pattern is setting up and the market's moving in the right direction and it opens correctly, you don't have to sit there and hem and haw. You just hit it and uh, go after it. Uh, Daryl, I have been remiss as far as putting up. I, we don't have a portfolio up. We have follow-up trades, that once a trade executes, I'm supposed to be uh, uh, following up or at least have them on the uh, uh, list or until there's a change in it, uh, and I haven't done it for a while just because by the time I get done with the port, with the picks at night, it's late, I'm tired, and I skip the uh, follow-ups. So with that... Uh, yeah, that's my lap. Okay. Anyways, I uh, you know, good Tim uh, again. This is I'm not trying to show people stock picks that will make money. I just want everybody to learn what picks to look forward to uh, or look look for uh, so they can make money. So if I ever get run over by a Mack truck while I'm driving one of my cars that you'll all be able to figure out uh, what to do on your own. All right, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow.